One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're starting out in the process of learning to snatch is they jump on YouTube and watch people like this smash in unreal lifts and then go in the gym and try and replicate it. And then this tends to happen. You see, most of those lifters that you saw a moment ago have been lifting for 10 plus years. Not only that, but they probably started at age less than 10. And that's not you. You're probably here watching this video wanting to learn how to snatch after the age of 20, which is why the approach that you need to take is different. My name's Sonny Webster and I competed in the 2016 Olympic Games and I'm a founder of The Lifting Zone. And I've helped hundreds of people around the world learn to lift from scratch with my new modernized approach, which I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. Now you see, I learned to lift 17 years ago. I was age 10, I walked into the gym and had no issues with my mobility and range of motion. Yet one of the biggest things I see people struggling with when they go to learn Olympic weightlifting now is they can't actually move well or achieve the positions that are required of them in Olympic weightlifting before you get started. Which is half the reason why so many people end up getting injured when they do our sport. Because they haven't done the fundamental thing first. Improve their range of motion so that they can achieve the positions that are required of them in the Olympic lifts before they start loading them. Which is why I like to look at my approach that I'm gonna to teach today is modernized because I cater for the fact that you right now probably can't achieve those positions and that you need to address those mobility exercises first before we progress any further. Which is why I'm gonna first of all just take you through a couple of the exercises or positions that you're gonna to need to be able to achieve if you wanna master the snatch correctly. So the first thing that we need to consider, especially when we're looking at how to snatch, is can we get into the bottom position of the snatch? So the bottom position of a snatch can require us to sit with our hips below 90 degrees or below knee height with our torso upright. This is extremely demanding on the mobility of the ankles and the hips and the thoracic spine for us to sit in this position. The next thing that we need to take into account is once we're in this position, we've got to take our arms overhead. So being able to have good range of motion in our shoulders and our upper thoracic so that we can pass the arms above the head, no worries, through this range of motion is going to be extremely important before we start throwing a bar above the head. The final position that requires a good level of mobility is for us to get into our set position. This requires us to have good thoracic extension to be able to set the spine in a neutral position before initiating the lift. So taking these three positions into consideration, are you at a point where you should be actually learning how to lift yet? Probably not. So if that is the case, I always suggest running through a good mobility protocol, such as the mobility manual, before you get into your training session, so that you're moving well first and you reduce your risk of injury. I'll put the link to that below this video. Now the first step that we need to consider when we're learning how to snatch is where our grip should be. So when we're snatching, we take a wider grip on the PVC pipe. And the easiest way to work out where this grip should be for you is to create a 90 degree angle with the two arms and take your PVC pipe and get the PVC pipe to meet the other hand, pass that overhead and return that to waist height. Okay? You should feel that the PVC pipe is resting now just above the lower abdominal or just above your pubic bone. One thing that I would say to you here in this position is make sure you're setting the shoulder blades back and down and the arms are locked straight to ensure that PVC pipe is in the right position. It might take a little bit of tweaking from there, but that's the easiest way to know where your grip should be. From there, what I then do is take that grip width and marry it up against the bar. You'll notice how there's marks on the bar, which allows me to make sure that I'm consistent with my grip every single time. Now the next approach that I take when I'm teaching someone how to snatch is to first address the overhead position. So I'm gonna now take the bar with my grip that I know that I have when I'm Olympic lifting and pass it overhead. Now in my overhead position, what I'm doing here is I'm letting my wrist sit back and I'm staying sternly rotated with the shoulders. Keeping that bar over the crown of the head is where we're gonna be most stable whenever we're doing an overhead squat. The minute that bar goes too far back, which a lot of people do when they start to learn a snatch, our core has to work over time to stabilize us. Equally, if the bar is too far in front of the head, because our shoulders are super tight, the shoulders are gonna do all the work and you're quickly gonna fatigue and struggle to get into a good lockout. So from here on, let my wrist sit back, I'm staying externally rotated and the bar's over the crown of the head. From here, I'm turning my toes out very slightly, I'm squeezing my bum, and then I'm thinking about breaking at the knee first to go down into my overhead squat position. 
Now depending on your level of mobility, this might be a little bit wobbly to begin with. So you'll notice how I'm wearing lifting shoes while I'm doing this, which has a raised heel, which makes it a little bit easier for me to go down to my bottom position while staying stable. When I'm in this bottom position here, what I'm focusing on is keeping my knees tracking out over my toes so that I'm comfortably sitting upright and my hips are sitting between my ankles in this bottom position. So you can go ahead and practice a few repetitions of that so you get comfortable with the overhead squat. Now the next thing we're going to address is the setup for the bar. Now the first thing that I look at when I'm thinking about setting up to the bar is where my feet should be when I'm in the setup. Now the easiest way to check this out, okay, is to have your feet wherever you would be if you're going to jump as high as you can. That's where you're going to produce most vertical force. Like I said, I like to keep my approach when it comes to teaching such a technical movement simple so that you'll easily remember some of these cues. So I've got my feet in my jumping stance and then I'm going to walk myself in under the bar so the bar is above the top lace of my shoe or through the middle of the foot. So just have a look down from the side, make sure that barbell is over the middle of the foot and then you'll be in the right position. What you'll also want to do is very slightly turn the toes out at the start position. Kind of thinking about 10 to 2 on the clock face. From here, because I already know what my grip width should be, I'm going to go down, bend the knees and take the grip on the barbell. Now when we're Olympic weightlifting, and this is crucial, it's a non-negotiable, we use a grip called hook grip. Now the hook grip requires us to pass the thumb underneath the fingers when we grip the bar. This will allow us to keep the arms relaxed during the pull phase of the lift, or what I like to refer to as the push phase. If the arms tighten up or you feel like your grip is failing throughout the lift, it'll make it very difficult for you to utilize your leg strength throughout the lift. So get comfortable with it. It will be uncomfortable to begin with. You can always tape your thumbs to help you with that, but just stick with it because trust me, you'll find that you get to a point where you won't be able to lift any heavier because the bar will be coming out of your hands. So I've got my hook grip on now on the bar and the next thing I need to think about is where I should be setting my bum height for my back when I initiate the movement, okay? Now a nice easy way to know where your bum height should be when you're setting up for the snatch, the bar on the shins, is that when you set your bum down, your knees and arms should be in line here. If your bum is too low, your knees will poke out in front of the arms. Equally, if your bum's too high, the knees will disappear behind the arms, okay? And you'll notice how my back's rounded here. So we set to a point where our knees and arms are in line. And if you're in the right position here, your legs will burn, okay? But that's where exactly where we want all the weight when we're initiating the lift. So I've got my grip on the bar now, I've got my knees and arms in line, and now from here I'm gonna set my shoulder blades back and down. So think about putting my shoulders in my back pockets. I then feel all the muscles in my back tighten up, and it stays in a nice neutral position. I'm ready to now begin the lift and use the legs from the floor. Now we've achieved a comfortable setup position, we need to start thinking about moving the bar in its first phase from the floor. Now, what I want you to notice is when I pull on the bar here, you'll hear like a clicking sound as I'm picking it up. That's called the slack. and We need to take the slack out the bar before we initiate the lift. So that's the first thing I'll do when I'm in the setup, is I'll actually think about very slightly taking the slack out the bar and then pushing the floor away with the legs. Okay, I'm just gonna stand up to waist height here, up onto the toes, and then I'm gonna pop the bar back down the exact same way as I picked it up. Now, speed is not your friend when you learn limited weight of things, so going nice and slow to initiate this movement is super important. I like to give my arms a little wiggle in this position and then slowly push the floor away of the legs till we get up to waist height. Now you'll notice how that bar is staying touching my shins and my thighs the whole way through the movement. I keep the bar touching so it's staying as close to the center of gravity as possible. And as soon as that bar comes past the knee, what I'm focusing on from here is squeezing the bum and standing up onto the toe. That keeps the bar touching as it comes past the knee. Now a common mistake that people will make during this first phase of the lift is they'll let the bum shoot up. So one thing that will really help you negate from doing this is not only slowing down, but picking something just above eye level to focus on the whole way through the lift. That way from the side, what you want to see is that the angle of the back stays the same when it's here and when it's here. That way our arms can stay relaxed and all the load is in the right position. Now a lot of people refer to this phase of the lift as the first pull. Whenever you think about pulling, you think about doing this. 
But however, in Olympic weightlifting, we actually want to think about pushing. So for the sake of this video and my modernized approach, we're going to call this stage from here to here the first push. Okay? Now as that bar comes past the knees, this is called the second push. And from there, I'm focusing on squeezing the bum, standing up onto the toes, keeping the upper body completely relaxed, and squeezing my bum to this top position. And then I'm going to return the bar back to the floor. You'll notice how every single time of going through that range of motion, I'm putting the bar back down the exact same way as I pick it up. This gets into a good habit of holding a good posture with your back when lowering the bar back down to the floor. And that's crucial when you're first learning out how to do the snatch. Now we've been through the first push, the second push, we're now gonna talk about the snatch jump, okay? Now this is a great way to think about being explosive through the middle phase of the lift, which is essentially gonna accelerate the bar enough for us to be able to move into the catch position of the snatch. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be into our set position here. We're gonna be keeping the control now till we get to mid thigh. Once we're in this position, we're gonna jump as high as we can. You've been learning or have known how to jump from a very young age. So it's a very easy feeling to replicate. So again, get into the set position, weights in the flats of my feet, Touching, touching, touching. When I get to mid thigh, bang, I'm gonna jump as high as you can, I can. Now you'll notice how I keep my arms relaxed while I'm doing that exercise. It's really important to keep the body as still as possible as you jump and just focus on what the legs are doing. Focusing on thinking about pushing and jumping is gonna stop us from letting the upper body do too much in the lift. Especially when you're learning out how to snatch, if you're focusing too much on what the arms are doing or traps or shrugging, all of these terminologies that you may have heard up to this date of this video, you're gonna think about small muscles doing big muscles jobs, which is not good. That's why our traps are so much smaller with our legs and I'd much rather back my legs when I'm lifting a heavy load. That's exactly why when you see great lifters lift, it looks so efficient because they're letting the big muscles do the work, which makes it effortless. So we've got to the point now where we're comfortable going into this mid-thigh position and jumping with the legs. The bar is now almost feeling weightless through that middle phase of lift, but now we've got to get it into our overhead position. So there's a little drill that I want to walk you through here, which is just going to make a little bit more sense to you now in terms of what the upper body is doing during this phase of the lift. We need to make sure, like I said, that the legs do everything before the arms even come into play. But after we extend here, what we're trying to think about doing is picking the t-shirt up with the bar or keeping the elbows higher than the hands so the bar travels close to the body and into that overhead squat position that we are in just a moment ago. So the focus is elbows higher than the hands. Once I can't get them any higher, I turn through and push to my overhead. So if you've got your PVC pipe here, I just want you to practice that here for me for a moment lifting the elbows nice and high, turning through, and then going into your overhead position. Sometimes even like to do this against the wall. Like so, just so I get used to feeling that bar staying close to the body. A common mistake that people will make when they learn to snatch is do this, and they'll swing the bar away, and that'll cause them to either jump forward or fall back when they're in the of thing. Predominantly because they go and watch great lifters lift and it sounds like a massive whack here when they're striking. So everyone goes, maybe I need to do this when I'm lifting. No, we don't want the bar to go in this direction, we want it to go up. So focusing on that jumping, elbows higher than the hands will help keep the bar close to the body. Now I'm gonna help you sew these two things together. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the bar up first of all to waist height. Now from here, again, even though I'm going from waist height, I'm still picking up like I go from the floor. I'm gonna lower first of all to mid, mid thigh. I'm gonna jump. And then from here, I'm gonna go jump, replicate that same movement that I did with the arms, catch, and stand up. And then to lower the bar down, I want you to control it and bend the knees so you catch the bar in the hip. Arms relaxed, reset, got the hook grip on. I'm gonna lower to mid thigh, I'm gonna do one jump, and then I'm gonna go one jump, and catch. Notice how you'll hear my feet landing at the same time my, I catch the bar overhead. That's a really good cue to think about, to get it nice and snappy, 
when you're receiving. You'll also notice that my feet move out. The reason why my feet move out is just like what we learned in the first segment of this video, I need to make enough room for my hips to sit between my ankles when I'm doing the overhead squat. So that's a natural movement out into the receiving position. Once you've drilled this and you've com you're comfortable with the one jump, one jump and catch, you're gonna do the exact same movement now from the floor. It's really important for me that while you're doing this, you're focusing on keeping the bar nice and controlled all the way until you get to the mid thigh before you jump, so it accelerates. And again, when you're moving from the floor, the same thing's happening, jump and catch. That is essentially what is known as a power snatch. So we're catching above 90 degrees. But of course, to be most efficient, we want to be able to catch the bar in the deepest position possible. But the reason why I segmented just like I did then in the learning process for you is that you still focus on hitting full extension. A lot of people that don't hit full extension during this phase will focus on dropping before they've actually given them enough heart on the bar to get underneath it. So it's always good to take that step. The final element that we're gonna add in now to our movement that we've been progressing is the overhead squat. The first thing you learn, the thing that you're most competent with now. So we're gonna go, stand up, mid thigh, jump, back to the floor, push, throw away, mid thigh, jump, catch, and then we're gonna go down into our overhead squat. And there, my friend, is the full snatch. We've broken it down into nice, simple components that can now get you comfortable working through that full range. It might feel a little bit disjointed as you become confident with this movement, but if you put enough repetitions on the light weights, it's gonna become more seamless. And that is when the bar will start to speed up naturally and you'll start looking to like some of those guys that you saw in the first part of this video. It's really important for me that you don't rush to try, to try and start load the bar up this early until you've become really comfortable with this movement. The more good reps that you can ingrain on a light weight consistently will allow you then to build up much heavier without technique breaking down. And like I said to you at the start of this video, if you've come here starting Olympic weightlifting after the age of 15 or 20 years old, strength problem probably isn't your limiting factor technique will be. So make sure you're patient with actually mastering these fund fundamentals first before you start moving forward. So I'm just gonna do a short recap for you now, just go over those fundamentals that we went through that kind of, like I said, my modernized approach to learning this. We've got our setup, feet in the jumping stance. We've got our grip width and our hook grip on. Bars touching the shins at the setup. My knees and arms in line. My shoulders are in my back pockets. I'm pushing the floor away. As I get to mid thigh, I think about jumping. Elbows stay higher than hands. I capture the top and go through my full overhead squat. When I finish the rep, I hold for a split second here and then pop the bar down. Like I said, nice and simple. So that's my breakdown, my modernized approach to learning how to snatch in 15 minutes. Like I said, spending time on these fundamentals and ingraining this good technique is gonna help you execute much better snatches and lift the weights that you wanna lift. If you're looking to continue to progress with your Olympic weightlifting, then what I want you to do is hit the link below this video and go and check out my Snatch Protocol. My Snatch Protocol is a six week plan that takes you through step by step the exact exercises and drills that you need to be doing to nail down the fundamentals of Snatch and hit a new PB. And in addition to that, we have a full step by step course that shows you exactly what I took you through today in more detail. So like I said, go ahead and hit the link below the video to find out more about that. You can join one of the biggest communities in the world within the lifting zone to upskill yourself in the sport of Olympic weightlifting. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and leave us a comment if there's anything else that you need my help with when it comes to weightlifting.